What's up everyone, Miss Frank, hope you're having a great day today. The gloves are out for today's head-to-head -head challenge. Megamods is bringing their newly released FPS Pro Controller to fight against the industry standard Scuff Reflex Pro. So let's find out which controller is going to take top spot. Today's video is made possible by Megamods. A huge shout out to them for supplying the controllers in today's video. Megamods create top tier elite custom modded and esports rated controllers. If you're interested in purchasing one of their products, make sure to click on my affiliate link found down below in the description to save a couple of bucks on your next purchase. If you're all ready for this video, smash that like button and let's get started. This video will be focused on reviewing the Megamods PS5 FPS Pro Controller and seeing how it compares against the Scuff Reflex FPS. For those who want an in-depth review on the Reflex FPS, click on the pop-up or link in the description. Both controllers are targeting those who are looking to step up their game to a high-end budget Pro Controller. Both controllers use the PS5 DualSense as their base and retain most of its features. You'll be able to customize your own Mega Mods PS5 FPS Pro Controller using the Controller Configurator. The controller will be released in September 2023 and will come in priced at around 200 USD depending on the configuration. The Mega Mods PS5 FPS Pro Controller comes in their traditional matte finished box, which is loaded with product information throughout. The controller is packaged similarly to the standard PS5 DualSense. The controller is placed in a cardboard box and is wrapped in a plastic bag for protection. The controller does move side to side and isn't that secure. The user manual is found at the bottom and there are two hidden compartments. The bottom holds a 9 foot long USB Type-C cable and the top has the extra thumbsticks. The Scuff Reflex FPS has a box sleeve design with a matte finish to it, orange accents and is loaded with product information throughout. Sliding off the sleeve reveals the glossy hexagonal design and the box retains the orange accents. Opening up the lid reveals the controller. It is well secured in place and won't move during transport. The controller sits in a mold of plastic base and the thumbsticks are protected by a foam padding, which gives great support. I still think the black plastic bag is an awkward choice and feels out of place for protection. The bottom of the box has the sleek black accessories box, which holds the six foot long USB Type-C cable and additional thumbsticks. Both controllers have completely different box styles, but both offer great product information and holds the controller's accessories. The Mega Mods box is traditional, doesn't offer much controller protection, and doesn't give a premium feel. Whereas with the Scuffs box, it gives a similar experience as opening up a luxury item. The box has nice touches throughout, keeps the controller secured, and you feel the quality. For these reasons, the Reflex FPS wins the first unboxing impression. The FPS Pro has a great feel to it and the traditional PS5 features are found throughout. The D-pad and face buttons are easy to use and you'll notice right away a sleek design change. The controller has a trimless front shell and its sides are a bit more muscular. This gives the controller a sleek and meaner look. The back of the controller has a great rubberized performance non-slip grip section that provides great comfort and feel. The four paddles are responsive easy to use and give a satisfying click. The bumpers and triggers are extremely tactile and easy to use. The panel gaps are tight and all of the components fit well together. When gripping the controller tightly, it doesn't crack and feels very robust. The controller as a whole feels solid and premium. The Reflex FPS also has a great feel to it. The D-pad and buttons are standard but still feel good to use. The scuff logos are subtle throughout the controller and the traditional PS5 features are also found throughout. The rear of the controller has an impressive large rubberized textured grip. The back paddle module is solid and well built. All four paddles are responsive and have a hexagonal design. The triggers and bumpers are instant and give that satisfying mouse click sound. The controller has a premium feel to it. It's well built and solid when holding tightly. Both controllers have impressive designs, taking the PS5 DualSense to a pro level. Both have great attention to detail and exceptional build quality. The large grip areas on both controllers provide great comfort and good grip. In all, 
both controllers meet the high quality design standards that you'd expect out of a top level pro controller. For these reasons, this category is a tie. The weight of the controller is very important as light controllers tend to feel cheap and weak, while heavy controllers tend to feel more premium and robust. But increased weight can lead to increased risk fatigue. The FPS Pro weighs in at 296 grams and the Reflex FPS weighs in at 286 grams. However, the weight listed for this controller is 300 grams. So it could be that my scale isn't that accurate, but still enough to show that the FPS Pro is slightly heavier. This is most likely due to the added tactile face buttons, but both weights are very similar and not that noticeable when holding. So for this round, I'm declaring it a tie. Since both controllers use the PS5 DualSense as their base, they are both compatible with the same devices. They can both be used wirelessly and wired, can connect to the PlayStation 5, Windows PC 7 and above, Apple products, and Android. The FPS Pro comes with a 9 foot long USB Type-C cable, whereas the Reflex Pro comes only with a 6 foot long USB Type-C cable. When both cables are installed, there is some side to side movement, but they still remain secured in place. The Reflex Pro USB cable does have a better build quality, but is shorter. Since both controllers have the same connectivity, this round is a tie. For those who game wirelessly, it is important to have a controller with a long lasting battery life. Both of these controllers have a similar battery life for an average of around seven hours while playing FPS games. This is very similar to the standard DualSense controller, which leads me to believe that both of these controls are using the stock batteries. This battery lifetime is pretty low when compared to other controllers that I've tested, which have a battery life of over 20 hours. Both of these controllers need to improve that battery life for their next iterations. This round is a tie. The FPS Pro comes with a huge improvement to the D-pad and face buttons. Mega Mods have upgraded them to the tactile mechanical buttons, which greatly improves response time and quickness. This will give you that satisfying mouse click feeling and they don't require much pressure to use. They are almost instant. On the other hand, the Reflex Pro doesn't have any added improvements to the D-pad or face buttons. They have the same standard feel as the traditional PS5 DualSense controller. They are still responsive and feel good to use, but don't provide any competitive advantage. Having upgraded D-pad and face buttons can greatly improve response time and help gain that edge in a wide variety of genres, from FPS to fighting games. The FPS Pro's tactile mechanical buttons respond quickly, don't require much force to use, and provide a satisfying mouse click feedback. The Reflex Pro doesn't have any improvements to its D-pad and face buttons, but they still feel good to use, but don't offer any advantage over the stock DualSense. For these reasons, the FPS Pro is the winner of this round. The FPS Pro comes with a load of additional thumbstick choices. Two short concave, two short domed, one long domed, and one long concave. They are all made of a soft rubberized material that provide good grip. Changing thumbsticks is simple and easy to do. Simply pull up on the thumbstick you want to remove, grab the desired thumbstick, align it, and press down firmly. They are simply press fit into place. The Reflex Pro also comes with additional thumbsticks. One long domed, one short concave, and one short domed. The thumbsticks are made of a soft, grippy rubber with hexagonal texture around the sides. In order to change thumbsticks, first remove the trim plate by lifting the corner edge up with your nail. Once unclipped, work your way around the trim plate. Next, pull up from the middle of the trim plate to remove it. Pick the thumbstick that you want to remove and pull up hard. This will require some force as the thumbsticks are pressed into place. Once removed, grab the thumbstick that you want to install, align the bottom slot, and press down hard. Grab the trim plate and insert the top two teeth in first, and then press down on the trim plate to click it into place, starting with the middle and working your way around the edges. 
having interchangeable thumbsticks is a great way to help further customize the controller to the player's preference, which will improve comfort and aim accuracy. The FPS Pro comes with plenty of alternate thumbstick choices and they are quick and easy to install. There is no need to remove any extra parts of the controller. Whereas with the Reflex Pro, the faceplate does need to be removed first in order to change the thumbsticks. And there isn't a large choice of alternate thumbsticks provided. For these reasons, the FPS Pro wins this category. The FPS Pro comes outfitted with the smart mechanical bumpers and triggers. The bumpers and triggers are instant and provide that desired mouse click sound. They don't require much force to use and will greatly improve reaction time as they activate instantly. Both bumpers and triggers are standard size and don't have any additional grip texture. There also isn't any trigger lock mechanism. Mega Mods has opted to go with the fastest possible trigger, so that will limit slightly the games that the controller can be used on. The Reflex Pro also comes equipped with the tactile bumpers and triggers, giving that satisfying mouse click feedback. Scuff also went the same route and doesn't have any trigger stop function. The triggers are set to the fastest possible setting, which is ideal for FPS games to be firing as quickly as possible. Both controllers are equipped with the tactile bumpers and triggers, giving a huge advantage in reaction time when firing. Not much force is needed to activate them as well, which is also good for reducing finger fatigue. The bumpers are very similar to press and distance to activate, but I have noticed that the triggers on the Reflex Pro have a slightly longer distance to be pressed down before activating. It seems that there's a bit of play. The triggers on the FPS Pro seem to be sitting directly on the trigger button, which makes activation pretty much instant. For this reason, the FPS Pro barely wins this category. The FPS Pro has a four back paddle mechanism. Two paddles are located towards the edges of the controller's handles, and the other two are located towards the middle. The paddles are plastic, have a large surface area, but don't have any added grip. They are easy to use, responsive, and give good feedback. With my natural grip on the controller, my fingers are nicely placed on the two outer paddles, making them comfortable and easy to use. My fingers can easily reach over to activate the two inner paddles. All four paddles are satisfying to use and give great feedback. The ergonomic design will accommodate many player hand sizes, but for those who like to have their fingers placed on all four paddles at once, will have a difficult time doing so, as the paddle positioning doesn't allow for that. I've also noticed that there isn't any stoppers behind the two outer paddles. After activating, the paddle continues to flex down, which will slow down reaction time and might lead to unnecessary wear. The paddles can be easily mapped directly from the controller. In order to map the paddles, first, press and hold the mod button for five seconds. The LED will light up red. Next, press and hold the desired stock button and paddle you want it paired to for three seconds. The LED will flash three times to indicate it's mapped. Repeat these steps to map the remaining paddles. Lastly, press and hold the mod button for five seconds to exit programming mode. The Reflex Pro has a four back paddle system as well. The plastic paddles are ergonomically placed towards the edges of the controller but don't offer any additional grip. They are, however, very responsive and provide great feedback. With my natural grip in the controller, my fingers are comfortably placed on the paddles and all four can be easily used at once. They don't require much force to activate and react quickly. I did also notice that the two outer paddles also don't have any stoppers behind them and flex after activating. The paddles can be quickly mapped directly from the controller and there are three preset profiles to choose from. Press the profile button to cycle through the profiles, starting with blue, FPS profile, then red, sport profile, and then green, racing profile. Choose the profile that you want to edit and then press and hold the profile button until it starts to blink. Next, map any paddle by simultaneously pressing the paddle and the button that you want it to mimic. The profile button will flash white to indicate the paddle is mapped. Repeat these steps to map the remaining paddles. When finished, 
Press the profile button again to save your configuration. Having back paddles is a must on any pro level controller as they greatly improve reaction time, character movement, and are essential at helping gain the edge over your opponent. The FPS Pro has a compact four paddle design that provides a large paddle surface area and great tactile response. They are comfortable and easy to use, but don't offer any additional grip. The outer paddles have some unwanted flexing and it can be awkward to try to use all four paddles at once. The Reflex Pro has a large bulky four paddle design, which also provides great feeling and are easy to use, but again, don't offer any additional grip. And the outer paddles also have some unwanted flex. Both paddle designs allow for mapping to be done directly from the controller, which is great. Although both paddle designs are completely different, they both perform exceptionally well, but the Reflex Pro has a slight edge because you can use all four paddles at once easily. For this reason, the Reflex Pro barely wins this round. Mega Mods really came out swinging with their FPS Pro controller. It's loaded with amazing pro features that every player desires, such as improved tactile mechanical D-pad and face buttons, easy interchangeable thumbsticks, performance non-slip grip handles, smart mechanical bumpers and triggers, and a comfortable compact four paddle design. The controller is robust and well built with attention to detail in mind, but the controller does need improvements in a few areas, such as elevating the box and packaging to match the controller's top-notch quality, fixing the unwanted paddle flexing, and improving on the battery life. The Scuf Reflex Pro, on the other hand, has an impressive unboxing experience, which matches the controller's top-level quality. It also has a nice soft rubberized handle grips, tactile bumpers and triggers, and a comfortable four-paddle design, but the controller is missing improvements to the D-pad and face buttons, there are some slight unwanted flexing in the paddles, and it has a high price tag of over 250 USD depending on the configuration. Tallying up the scores, the Mega Mods PS5 FPS Pro is the winner of this head-to-head -head challenge. The Scuf Reflex Pro is the industry standard pro controller that all controllers aspire to be, but Mega Mods brought their A game with their FPS Pro, allowing it to take the top spot. Both of these controllers are extremely similar and top tier quality, but the Mega Mods PS5 FPS Pro comes in at a cheaper price tag and offers an improved tactile D pad and face button system, giving it that edge. It is truly an impressive controller that is ready to compete at the top level. If you have any questions I spoke about in today's video, I'll be leaving a link down below to join the Mega Mods forum. Hop on in and ask your question. Myself and Mega Mods will be there to assist you. Also, feel free to leave a comment down below in the video or hit me up on social media. It is always a pleasure helping you guys out and interacting with my community. You guys are all amazing. Many more review videos to come, so stay tuned. If you all enjoyed watching this video, make sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, it's greatly appreciated. And if you are new to my channel, check me out for the very first time, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with my content, and don't forget to press that bell to become part of my notification squad. A huge shout out to the sponsors, to the new subscribers, to the Sprout Troopers, you guys are all amazing. Everyone have a great rest of your day or night whenever you're watching this video, and I'll see you all on the next one. Peace.